I always tell people that there are three main pillars to understand how music works. Melody, of course, which is, you know, the song or the tune that you share. The harmony, which supports that melody. And then tying them all together is the rhythm. And you can have an awesome melody all you want. You could have super complicated harmonies. But until you add rhythm, your music's gonna sound pretty bland. This is why I think rhythms are so important to understand, especially if you're wanting to, you know, improve on your instrument, or better yet, just understand what's happening in your music that you listen to every day. So let's talk about rhythms. Besides being really hard to spell, rhythm is simply put just music's pattern in time. At least that's what Google told me when I looked it up. But to me, rhythms are the soul of music. They help create the essence of music that makes you want to bob your head and just dance. And I found a really great way to start using them in your music. And I wanted to share them with you today. So let's get into how you can start learning rhythms right away. After teaching music for a few years, I've come up with a simple but effective way to start getting creative and developing your rhythm skills. But before we do that, let's quickly go over what kinds of rhythms are out there. This is a rhythm pyramid, or some people call it a rhythm tree, and it shows how many beats each type of rhythm gets and how they are related to each other. The value of the larger rhythms can be divided up evenly into smaller and smaller values. And when we map it out, it just naturally starts to look like a pyramid. At the top, we have a whole note, which is worth four beats. Splitting that whole note into half, we get half notes, both having two beats each. Split those in half, and you get four quarter notes. Split those in half again, and you get eighth notes. And why are they called eighth notes? Because there's eight of them. Genius. Now you can continue to keep splitting these in half forever until you get to something crazy like 1024th notes. But then you start to get to the question of why would anyone want to play 1024th notes because it's just so outlandishly fast. To start creating rhythms, we need to start learning about the term beat, which is essentially the underlying pulse of the music. The beat guides the rhythms along and gives you a much more accurate way to create specific rhythmic patterns. And to keep track of your beats in the music, we use something called a time signature. Time signatures used to really throw me off uh, when I was first learning them, because I didn't get them. It was just essentially math, and I was terrible at math as a kid growing up, and to be honest, I'm still kind of really crappy at math. But time signatures aren't too bad. All a time signature really is, is a fraction. So if you have a song that's in 4-4, the top number tells you how many beats you have in a measure, or, you know, the, the quantity, if you will, and the bottom number tells you the quality, or what kind of beat you're going to have in each measure. In a time signature, the top number tells us how many beats we have in a measure. The bottom number tells us what kind of beat the music is using. So, for a song that has a time signature of 4-4 four, four time, we'll have four quarters per measure, or four quarter notes per measure, if you want to get more specific. So, these time signatures give us a really nice guideline as to how many beats we have and what kind of beats we're using. This structure is going to help you start exploring what kind of different rhythms are out there, so you can start creating your very own at your own pace. The discovery process that I'm about to show you focuses on one specific concept. Where can I put the rest? And by using four quarter notes, we can start to explore how this concept works to prepare us for some of the smaller, more challenging rhythms. So let's give it a try. Rests are just silences that have the same value as their note counterpart. Here, I've added some quarter rests at random to see how they will affect the sound of the quarter note rhythm. Let's hear how it sounds. And now with the rests in different spots. What I've realized over my time writing music and teaching is that it's not so much about where the notes are that make the rhythms, 
but rather where the rests are that help you understand how the rhythm will feel when you play it. This process has been a game changer for me and it's really allowed me to come up with some really cool ideas as a composer, but it's also really helped me understand just how rhythms work in general, which is, I think, a huge plus. With four beats, we can either group them together or break them apart into smaller values. By grouping the beats together, you increase the values. This leads to the half notes, which are two beats each, or the whole note, which will take up all of the beats in a 4-4 time signature. However, if we are to go smaller, we have to start counting things a little bit differently by using subdivisions to ensure that we are playing the rhythms accurately. A subdivision is an audio cue to help us accurately play the rhythms that we create with the smaller values. You can see now that I've split the quarter notes into smaller eighth note rhythms. This means that I can start to count using the word and, placing them in between each of the original four beats. One and, two and, three and, four and. As I said before, this process gives us rhythmic accuracy and allows us to learn and play some of the more challenging rhythms easily. Let's walk through a few examples together so you can start exploring these on your own after the video is done. The examples will be using eighth rests, which are the same value as the eighth note. I've added some rests from our original solid group of eighth notes to change things up a bit. Try clapping along if you feel up for a challenge. Let's try one more. This time I've changed some of the rhythms to see if it feels drastically different. Here we go. Both of these examples may sound complicated as they have some of those notes playing on the off beats or the, the ands, if you will. But by sounding it out, we can accurately hit the offbeats, creating what's called syncopated rhythm. A syncopated rhythm is simply put, a rhythm that is displaced from the main beats to be played on an offbeat. These syncopated rhythms are the secret sauce that can be used in both melodies and harmonies to make songs really stand out. And they're used in many different styles, such as jazz, classical, rock, pop music, and film scores. They're an amazing tool to get to know if you're looking to advance your rhythm skills or for just your playing or your writing in general. We've had some fun in this video today. We've learned the basics of what kind of rhythms are out there and given them values. We were also able to put our rhythms into a grid-like form using the time signatures. But after that, it was a simple matter of replacing some of those rhythms with the rests to create some unique and exciting rhythms that you can start to use in your own music. Now, of course, there are different time signatures out there that we didn't get to look at in this video, like 3-4 time or 6-8 time, or scarier time signatures like 13-8 or 21-16. But we'll save those for a future video. At the end of the day, the process of eliminating some of the notes to create space using the rests will help you explore and understand rhythms at a much deeper level, hopefully leading you to some pretty cool rhythmic combinations. If you liked this video and learned something new about rhythms, be sure to leave a like on the video and let me know what your favorite time signature is in the comments down below. You can also subscribe to the channel and be sure to hit the notification bell to let yourself know when each video is released. Every little bit helps in sparking musical passion in as many people as possible and your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Tonicized.